fourth day of Royal Ascot begins with the Group 3 Albany Stakes, a six furlong juvenile fillies contest which should have an impact on the rest of this year as well as the 2019 Classic campaign. Aidan O'Brien has his usual strong hand in this year's contest with Fairyland and just wonderful to the fore. Could Charlie Appleby continue his brilliant season with the dandy man filly La Pelosa, a winner on debut at Kempton Park, where runner-up Chaleur subsequently franked the form? La Pelosa is striding clear inside the final furlong. She's going to make a striking debut here. Staying off on the back is Chaleur into second place, but it will be La Pelosa, an impressive debut for Charlie Appleby and William Buick. Chaleur, good late work for second. Wes Ward's team brings the international flavour to the race with Stillwater Cove, but perhaps the strongest team in the home defence comes from Mark Johnson, with main addition unbeaten and unextended in two starts so far, including a Goodwood novice stakes last time. It is main addition who is clear by two widening lengths, and the filly will beat the boys. She's now a perfect two out of two. Her name, main addition. Johnson also saddles Octave, a winner first time up before finishing second to the Coventry winner Calix last time. And it's Robert Havlin and Calix who have now gone clear. A half furlong to go and the son of Kingsman is pulling clear. It will be Calix to win on debut. In second was Octave, in third was Carden. The three-year-old Colts have another chance to stamp their presence on this year's summer campaign, with Derby sixth Delano Roosevelt heading the Aidan O'Brien team for the King Edward VII stakes. Charlie Appleby's Godolphin representative, Old Persian, has had a less lofty campaign to date, with a listed victory at Newmarket last time, his highest profile victory. But his profile could be less exposed than those of the Ballydoyle contingent. They're inside the final furlong. William Buick, Old Persian, a hard-fought lead of just ahead. Courthouse with one lunge. It won't be enough. It is Old Persian who wins on the Roly Mile. John Galston's Ra Atoll beat royal contender Elector at Nottingham in May and has subsequently won again. Ra Atoll hit the front between the two and the one and is now chased by Elector and Occupy with Spanish Archer running on well behind those but it's Ra Atoll with a call up towards the line. Ra Atoll. And the North is represented by Wells Fargo, overwhelmed by the occasion on his three-year-old debut in the Dante Stakes, but such a taking winner of the Acom at two. James Garfield, though, has been produced. James Garfield from Wells Fargo in the red cap on the outside is coming at him slowly but surely. James Garfield, Wells Fargo, easy up the ground. It's tight. Aidan O'Brien won this last year with the super-fast Caravaggio. And this year, the Ballydoyle team is headed by Sioux Nation, winner of last season's Norfolk Stakes at the Royal Meeting. Running towards the winning post now, Santry in the green and white. So it's Sioux Nation, the blue and orange, the far side with Ryan though. And it's Sioux Nation, the far side, who's won to Santry? James Tate goes in search of a first Group 1 success with the side Manana-owned Invincible Army, who was a course and distance winner back in May when landing the Group 3 Pavilion Stakes. Invincible Army, so tough and consistent though, we'll see them off. First run as a three-year-old after a fine two-year-old campaign, Invincible Army's on his way again. Sands of Marley is unbeaten in two starts this term, won the Group 2 Jim Crack Stakes in August and beat Invincible Army for a second time in the Sandy Lane Stakes last time. Invincible Army now looking to draw level with Sands of Marley, then James Garfield and Inblazon. Well inside the final half furlong now, it's Sands of Marley and Invincible Army, a great finish here to the Sandy Lane. It's Sands of Marley just ahead of Invincible Army at the line, very close. Clive Cox has few peers when it comes to readying sprinters at the highest level. And his Kalaki filly, Heartache, was a good winner of last season's Queen Mary stakes at this meeting. Although she will need to improve on her lacklustre seasonal bow. Heartache. Heartache has come through now to join Happy Like a Fool. It's this pair together to Maybridge. Behind those is now you're talking as they haste towards the line. And it's Heartache and Adam Kirby who burst through the lead by a couple of lengths and win. The Michael Bell-trained Main Desire is unbeaten in three career starts, including two listed events at York, 
and this daughter of High Chaparral comes from the same family as the top class American classic winner, Easy Goer. Five spread right across the track, near side main desire from Hey Jonesy, main desire just from Hey Jonesy. Jessica Harrington is having a fantastic flat season and her Irish 1000 Guineas heroine Alpha Centauri bids to go one better at the meeting following last season's narrow second in the Albany Stakes. Different league chased all the way by Alpha Centauri on the far side. They may have it here. Different league clinging on from Alpha Centauri trying hard, but not enough. Different league. The Bally Doyle team is spearheaded by Churchill's full sister, Clemmy. She has ground to make up on Alpha Centauri on Irish Guineas and Albany form, but she won a brace of group races on these shores last season. Clemmy on the far side of different league. Clemmy by a half length of different league. Clemmy pulls a length clear and the full sister of Churchill will go on and win the Chiefly Park. Soliloquy finished just outside the places in two guineas this season. And based on her Group 3 Nell Gwyn stake success in April, comes here with a good each way chance. One inside the last soliloquy by length over in second out in order. Badly on his Irene near side, but it's soliloquy you're here under William Buick will land the Nell Gwyn stakes. Bilson Brooks' fairy tale 1000 guineas victory led her owners, the Pow Mau Partners Syndicate, to supplement her for this race, and they'll be hoping the decision yields another big win. But Billard's done broken, Sean Levy are leading inside the last furlong. Lauren's in second place behind those wild illusion and happily they run towards the line. Billard's done Brook in front. She's going to win the Kipco 1000 guineas with Sean Levy. Billard's done Brook the winner. Roger Varian's Kazina, third to the highly promising one-time Oaks favourite Lati Da in the Pretty Polly, confirmed her to be a filly of significant potential, having caught a few eyes with her win at Newmarket in April. They run inside the final furlong Kazina by about three to four lengths here, and she's well on top here this Oaks entry. Kazina goes on to take it. Kazina. Frankel filly Ganayan trained by Owen Burrows, had contrived directly behind in second when winning the second race from as many starts this season at Goodwood. And it's Gan A.M. who still has the lead, and now Jim Crowley is urging her to go and seal the deal. In second place is Why We Dream. Contrive is staying on towards the inside, but this horse was backed as if defeat was out of the question, and the market gets it right. Rafe Beckett's Kaylee's Dream found the Group 3 level of the Musidora too much of a challenge last time, but on her penultimate start, she had a neck in hand at the line over William Haggis's progressive filly, Sea of Class. Kaylee's Dream a little wider out, Sea of Class now. She's got a head in front from Kaylee's Dream, who's only a neck in behind, Sea of Class and Kaylee's Dream. Sea of Class just in front from Kaylee's Dream, who rallies all the way to the line. Kaylee's Dream's gonna get up. Dathana, representing Charlie Appleby and Ed Walker's Agritera, have already met up once this season, with the Godolphin representative coming out on top by a length, with the runner-up receiving six pounds that day. She has a considerably lighter weight than that rival on this, the rematch, but it remains to be seen if a jump from a rating of 88 to 101 can stop Dathana's progression. Dathana now forges her way back to the lead. She was headed momentarily by Agritera, who's still there in second place, but Dathana, it was hard work, but she's home.